we're gonna get the proper tunage in this ride that it deserves to be noticed when you're walking past it and you look in the back window and you're like, what <laughs> what happened? Like, it looks like you covered it with Rust-Oleum and then you just gave up. Kinda hurts me when you say that out loud, but um, we'll get through it. That's right, I've got a double header for you today. Ooh, yeah, right there. Daddy Matt's gonna smash one out of the park on our old Buick. So today we're gonna be building the back rear deck panel speaker situation, panel rear deck panel situation. Step one of 673 is to get some cardboard and make a layout. The easiest way to do this in my opinion is figure out your width and get a rough estimate for how deep it's gonna be and then the secret Matt 10,021 trick. Use your back glass to get your curve for the back edge, it's super hard to figure out. Your back glass is gonna be super close to the same curve, angle, bevel, edge, as it's gonna be down below. Once you've made like a rough draft template, just go ahead and test fit her and look at that. Unbelievable, <laughs> like fits like factory. I'm gonna use this piece of plywood because that's what I had in my shed. It's half inches-ish, that's probably gonna work for me. I like a good thick daddy board to mount all my speakers to it. Make some sound bass. Well, you can't argue with that logic. So don't worry about this. Just start cutting and you can trial and fit it. There's nothing that wood filler and some sandpaper won't fit. And if we really mess this up, there's nothing Bondo and a belt sander won't take care of here. Lots of, lots of stuff happening. Got some speakers we gotta mount in there. These pioneers are just heavy enough to make me question uh, these are actually speakers in this box are just garbage they threw it in china and shipped over but do you know how hard it is to find speakers nowadays that don't look like they have grills from like cyberpunk 27777 in the future we could skip step 124 to uh, 300 something and just drill holes into this panel and mount our speakers that way but we're gonna pow kick it up a notch emerald laguini style and we're gonna do something different so i'm gonna go find a different board cut her all down and like well just do something a little okay i'll drill some more holes and trace out a border i guess probably about two inches maybe three inches we'll see how it goes you know you win you lose some it doesn't really matter i mean, just do whatever you think looks good none of this it's fine it's it, this is our project together none of this matters Unfortunately, I've hit the point today where I just don't feel like being successful anymore. Like if we keep this up, it's it's not gonna look good for anybody. But look at look at all that. That looks that looks pretty good. Nice, nice and well, it's getting there. Nice and getting there. But now we got to do something to make this not look like wood. We're gonna upholster it. And I know how much you like clean video cuts, so welcome uh, to today's uh, new problem. Well, it's the same problem from yesterday, but now we're now we're gonna make it not wood. Well. It's gonna have some wood in it, I guess. Unfortunately, I really don't recommend anything besides the Wellwood Lando top trim adhesive. Nothing else compares to it. The 3M high performance spray adhesive kind of contact it, uh, kind of. You're gonna need a heavy duty stapler if you plan on going through MDF and some staples that won't go all the way through MDF. Ask me how I know. You're gonna need a hair dryer or a heat gun because we're gonna do some yoga poses and stretches today. Uh, a hammer because that'll, that'll make sense later. And you're gonna need some vinyl. So we're gonna use all sport four-way stretch vinyl. The four-way stretch is really important. Most vinyls are actually only a two-way stretch, meaning they only stretch in like north, south, or east-west direction, depending on how you have the grain. Four-way stretch vinyls stretch all directions, although I will admit that going off the grain, they don't stretch as much as the other direction, but it, it's fine. It stretches more than any other vinyl out there. Check me out if you're trying to vinyl something that's like super complicated, like these consoles that I make in my free time. These require all sport four-way stretch vinyl. Like you can't use anything else to make these parts. You can try and you're gonna be really upset. Lay your vinyl down and just kind of walk around your vart. That way you can kind of get a feel for where things need to be tugged, pushed on, straightened, where you're gonna need to get your heat gun action on. You may notice that this is not a spray gun. <laughs> That's a keen eye there, my friend. I'm not gonna waste my time, effort, money, life on putting it all in a spray gun for literally like two minutes of spraying. No, 
We can get this 90% of the way there just with a brush and a little bit of love. So since weld wood is a contact adhesive, we have to apply it to both sides of the part and then just let it mellow yellow for a little bit. The reason is that if you don't let it mellow yellow and you just kind of smash this onto this piece right now, it, well, it, it might actually try to glue in its defense, but it's not like where it could be. And we want this to be where it could be. Now she's, she's got a good stickiness to her that probably causes cancer and it's ready to go. All we gotta do is carefully start bringing this piece down. Yeah, yeah, walk her out. Now walk it out with just enough tension to make it so it doesn't wrinkle. We're not, we're not stretching this by any means, but we're not, we're not not being firm with it, you know? Yeah, that's, that's nice. Now that I've got the first half laid out, or well, I, I aimed for half, it, it came out more like a third, Nailed that. We're gonna go ahead and lay out the rest of it. I wouldn't recommend messing with the edges yet since this is such a simple piece to cover. If you were messing with a very complicated piece like this console, look at it, look at all these complicated edges. Yeah, yeah, I did those, yeah. It was awful to cover. Go ahead and get all of the big air flat areas done first and then come back to the edges. You'll, you'll thank yourself, right, we'll, we'll thank each other. Before I switch to vinyling the other side of this piece, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and trace the outline of the outside roughly on that piece of vinyl. That way I don't waste a whole bunch of extra glue and also get it all over my hands when I'm trying to pull and stretch. That's uh, another little 10,000 tip tid, tiddly bit there. Now's the moment that you can thank us for beveling all those edges. This is what happens. See how around the edges it wants to bunch up? Well, since you gave it that nice little curvy beveled edge situation, you don't have to worry about it the entire distance. You just have that one little that right there around edges. Mm, mm, is that good? Oh yeah, that's real nice. Now that we've got the outside perimeter edge done, I'm gonna come back through here and cut as much of the excess vinyl off as possible. That way it doesn't get in our way for all the fun activities that we're about to do on that inside curved edge. So take your hammer, place it in the middle, and take your Revlon Love 9000 and just start blasting it around here and stretch this material out as much as you can before you start to really deform it. That way you've got plenty of material to pop around the backside like a pro, because this is definitely how pros do it. And now look at what we just figured out together. Look at that. Wow. Look at them angles. Look at them lines. Step 569, I guess, is uh, mountain, the, mountain the speakers. And I am notorious for doing a not bad job everywhere else than immediately running the screwdriver bit through the speaker surround. So much so that in one of my jobs, they didn't even let me do it. They just put me in the back and said, build stuff like this and don't touch anything else. So, um, okay, so I didn't break anything on that first screw. That gives me seven more chances just to totally f this thing up. I can do it. Well, there it is, step 727. All installed, uh, I imagine it probably sounds okay. I forgot to order a head unit. So I guess we'll just keep using this to blast Duke Ellington down the road. But um, yeah, they look good in there, I, I, I guess. Real, real nice to look at, those speakers. So tell me what you think of this project down below. And maybe, maybe we'll do some more projects like some custom door panels or finishing literally anything else. Maybe, we'll see. And my process goes like this. You just smash the like button, I mean volume button, a few a thousand times to make sure she's really pumped up. And then you just uh, grab your phone and you pull up your favorite Duke Ellington song. Oof, that's a good one, yeah. And then you really gotta yeet it back there. If it gets in the trunk, it, uh, it actually increases the bass. And then I just drive around like this for, well, this car hasn't made it an hour long drive yet. Not without something going really wrong.